you are wasting your time while developing games. That was a bit harsh, I don't even know you, but yeah, you can probably do some things more efficiently and spend your time doing something you actually like. Introducing Unity Editor Extensions Why would you extend the editor when you can spend your time adding something meaningful to the game, like items or enemies? Hopefully you will find the answer in this video. Let's quickly answer some questions. What? Why? And finally, how? This part is for you guys. Unity is a tool. Tool to make games. It's generalized and includes some tools that probably most of the game developers will need, like 3D editor, animations, UI and so on. They can add tools specifically for your platformer roguelike. What they can add for us is the ability to extend the editor to suit your project. And they did. We can create windows, tools and custom inspectors. To automate things, to make our job easier, to enable us to use our time of things that matter. I am making a survival game where you build and fly your own airship. Do you want to know what I had to do manually before I discovered extensions? I had to create two prefabs of building object, swap materials to the green ones, add colliders, script, rigid bodies, create scriptable object and assign values. All these steps to get a new building object to the game no joke, this is just one click now. I made this window where you put the model and fill some details and it does all that stuff for me. Hopefully I'm not the only one blown away by this, but you are still watching so probably not. Now I want you to think of use case of editor extensions in your project. Is there something you do often and it's basically the same every time? Let me show you the project first. We have first person movement and simple collectible logic. When you go close to this apple, it prints the name and it disappears. Collectible is an empty object with sphere collider set as trigger. The script checking the trigger is called collectible and it has on trigger enter function to check player presence and it also has a reference to scriptable object that holds data like a name or icon. The actual model is a child of this object and it has box collider and a rigid body. Let's do an editor script that does all of this setup for us and it creates prefabs and scriptable objects. To get started with editor scripting, create a new folder named editor right in the assets folder. This will hold all of our editor scripts. Create a new script and open it up. We have to change the mono behavior to edit the window to create a new window. To show the window, use the static method name show window and inside called get window, name of your script, and for example test for now. Let's add a property above our show window function called menu item. What are menu items? When you go back to Unity and look here, all of these are menu items. You can add your custom window to all of these or even create a completely new menu. Where the menu item goes is defined here. When you put window slash test, it will be here. When you put add slash new collectible, it will be here and so on. There is basically nothing stopping you from doing this. <laughs> Fun little thing, you can add shortcuts, just do a space and type the combination. Now the shortcut shows up and works. Moving on, try clicking it. And our window opens. Now we can see where the title shows and we can edit it. Let's add some content. I would like to have three fields, one for FBX model, second one for item name and the last one is for an icon. First define the string variable on top and create a new function called onGUI. Here we can define all the logic for our window. This is how we add the text field. First parameter is the label and the second one is the variable. For the items we will create the sprite variable and again we will use editor layout only a different function called object field. Label variable name and type of object to search. When you click on this field, the object search will appear and the content will be filtered by the type we provided. Finally, let's add the FBX model of the collectible. Again, we want to use the object field, but now with different type of object. If you're wondering what else the editor GUI layout contains, I highly recommend the wiki. There is a list of all of them with some details and examples. This is how we add buttons. When you click them, it will return true, so we can add our actions to the if. Now let's create the prefabs and scriptable object. Make an empty game object, we need a sphere collider and set some variables like radius and trigger. Last thing we are going to do for the parent is adding a collectible script that will handle on trigger enter. Now let's add the child. We instantiate the object you picked from the window and parent it to the empty game object. 
I reset the transform just in case, edit the box collider and rigid body so the items have physics. Lastly, let's create a scriptable object. Create a new instance and set all the fields you entered from the window. Also, don't forget to add this data to collectible script with this line. The final object is now created. You can even see it in our scene. It looks all good. Last part is saving it. Luckily, it's pretty easy. Let's define a path where we want to save a prefab and also path to save the object. We will call asset database that create asset with the scriptable object and the correct path. This now saves it correctly to the folder. For the prefab, we will call prefab utility save as prefab asset with a parent game object and the path. To remove it from the scene, we will call distro immediate. Test it out, create some collectibles and have fun. Don't stop here, explore. There are a ton of things you can do, node editors, custom inspectors, contextual menus and more. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, I highly recommend this series. Have a nice day. Bye.